okay before we get started on today's video I know you're eager to see the finished Stuka um, I thought you'd, I'd take you through why I'm not currently doing any live streams a lot of the regulars have been asking me uh, via email and other messages why I'm not doing the live streams anymore well there's just too many projects to finish so I'm going to let you know what I'm going to finish first before we get back to the live streams so we're going to start with the Hobby Barn tribute build, the 1 to 10 scale to my uh, GT4 Mustang. Many thanks again to Lord Peter for sending me a load of extras for this. Uh, it goes like a rocket. I've got all the footage done of this now, so that's coming up in a video. We got the Hobby, but sorry, the Hobby Boss 1 to 18 scale ME 262 in the Rebel Alliance colours that everyone decided on through one of the live streams. This is just a beast to behold. We have got in the wings. The nacelles contain um, a 150 gram of thrust ducted fan in each nacelle. We've got Gatling red lasers in the nose. When that kicks off, man, it's just something to behold. We've got a working R2-D2 there. He's got his own laser that he shoots and that's on a servo as well. All the flaps are on the servos. The video when this comes out, I hope we get some good numbers watching it because this has been a labour of love, it really has. The basic Hobby Boss kit though, 1 to 18, it's about 80 quid in the UK, so, and all you get is a big lump of plastic and everything else on this is scratch built, including the steering at the front which is all brass, that's a thing, thing of beauty in itself. And I'll be doing a deep dive into this when we do the video on it. Uh, loads of footage of that on the build and of it running up and down the road. Uh, we've got the Spitfire as well. I've already released a couple of videos on that. That's almost finished. Just a, a couple more finishing touches on it and we'll be there. We've got the Tamiya 1-16 to King Tiger with the production turret on it. Uh, another great model from Tamiya. A real unicorn find. We've also got the Pants the pants 4 to finish. Um, this one, again, another labour of love. This is the Bandai version, 1 to 15 scale. Um, a wonderful thing. I've scratch built all the shirts on it. They're all aluminium and all the hangers are all brass, all scratch, scratch built and soldered and screwed on. Uh, this is motorised and fully remote control, as are all the rest of my collection of tanks. They're all Tamiya's up there. Uh, another Tamiya, another, that's the Imai, another unicorn. 1 to 15 scale uh, Panzer 4 but without the shirts in. Um, and a couple of King Tigers there's a band sorry a couple of normal Tiger ones there's the Bandai Tiger one 1 to 15 you can see how much bigger that is than the uh, Tamiya one so that's where we are with the projects I'm going to finish the Spitfire the ME262 the Mustang the King Tiger Porsche turret and the Panzer 4 so if you're not subscribed yet you really need to I've uh, got some great videos coming out. Well, I think they're going to be great videos, and I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments if they're not great. Um, I look forward to good and bad comments, as always. So, here we go. Let's do the Stuka. And here she is, the finished Stuka JU87 by Airfix. A vintage classic from, I believe, 1970-something or other. A really old kit. I mean, probably someone could tell me in the comments how old this actually is. Uh, but it has been my most enjoyable build yet for numerous reasons you know I'd heard horror stories about how bad these original 124 vintage classic kits were from Airfix but I've actually really loved this yes it's got its problems the cowl doesn't fit properly you've got to make jiggery pokery with the engine in there I'll show you that in shortly I'll take the cowl off and you can see that this is fully motorized um, and I'll show you that shortly and she's fully lit the detail on this is insane all the rivets on the wings it beats I've been told by John Alec uh, one of the uh, subscribers to the channel that the detail on this beats the trumpeter version hands down so if you can get your hands on one of these I would thoroughly recommend it uh, other problems I encountered obviously the gull wings where these joined on here um, underneath I had to use plastic shims to fill a gap it, they just don't fit simple as that they leave a huge gap so just be wary of that when you do it uh, also on the engine uh, let me just open the cowl up so you can see what's going on with the engine. I did manage to get it to fit. I've put little screw screws on which aren't authentic to the aircraft, but that's just so I can take the cowl on and off to show you guys. Now, I'm going to do that now. Um, she's just absolutely glorious. Before I do all the taking apart, I'm just going to show you underneath because the, un the underside of this is just stunning. Let me get some light on it. The detail is just incredible. 
I haven't gone overboard with the weathering. In fact, I've done absolutely none. I've, I've done the panel lines, but that is about it. Um, it is an absolutely glorious kit. And you can see there, I mean, I've done a pretty good job of filling filling the gaps on the gull wings. Um, anyone who's built this kit will tell you the same thing. It does have its issues, but that's part of the pleasure of building this particular model. Um, you get to use all your skills as a modeler to uh, really, really make a... It comes out wonderful. I mean, I think, I think it's just glorious. I mean, every From every angle, it is a... A thing of beauty um, obviously early on in the war it gave us a few problems and the Battle of Britain when it was taking out radar sites and stuff like that um, but it was absolute mincemeat for <laughs> the Spitfires and the Hurricanes of the time because it was so slow once it had dropped its bomb it couldn't really get away very fast and even on the way to Dover and, and wherever it was targeting um, easy meat for the RAF um, and the story does go that the, the first time these were demonstrated to Adolf Hitler, most of them just hit, hit the ground. They just plummeted into the ground until further technical adjustments could be made to these. Um, some of the, I do believe they ended up putting it in um, an automatic uh, pull-up system so that if, if for some reason the pilot was unable to pull up, uh, it automatically did it. So just an incredible incredible plane and i'm wittering on now let's get down to the brass bolts of this let me get that cover off and show you the delicious engine that's under there right let's get some power on shall we okay let's put the cowls over there for a moment and uh, switch is under here somewhere i'm going to get the lights on and we're going to get the motor going right now so come on switch i'm going to need to change the switch on this there we go Those the propellers going round, we've got the navigation lights on. That says, let's begin with it. I don't think you can see it in there, but that's all lit inside the uh, cockpit as well. Let me just uh, take that off so you can see it better. There we go. Can we get in there? Let me turn that light off. Let's go. <laughs> so there we go. And the Jericho horn is just there. Let me just turn this off. See it stop. See it spin again. Hang on. Let's go. Okay, Jericho horn, do your thing. Okay, Jericho Horn, do your thing. <laughs> there we go. Now, I would have had this hanging from my ceiling, but I forgot to put a separate switch in for the Jericho Horn, which would have been a great idea. Um, but I tell you, easily, this is the second best model kit I've ever built, and I've done lots of expensive Tamiya stuff. I'm a fairly experienced modeler, but I've loved building this, even with all of its problems. Um, let's turn that off for a second. Uh, okay, all of the um, all of this works, by the way. The slide back for the... Let me just pull that back without breaking it. This does slide back. Unfortunately, there we go. We can slide that back. Trust You have to trust me on that. I'm not going to damage the paintwork, but it does slide back. Um, the other just clips on, like so. Put that on. Got them all pack handed. There we go. So let me put the lights back on. There we go. But it is incredible. This kit highly recommended. I think you can still pick them up on eBay for about hundred odd quid, or maybe maybe it's less. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Airfix re-release this. I know they've got the P51 coming up as a re-release for 124 in autumn. Uh, I'm definitely going to be grabbing that and uh, that one. I should be able to put servos for the flaps. This one, I couldn't. There wasn't the space. Um, and I really didn't fancy the arduous tasks. I'm already behind all of, my, all of my projects, as you saw from earlier. So there we have it. I have actually finished a model kit. That is the Airfix 124 Stuka 80, JU87. Um, and it has been a thorough joy to build. 
from gluing it together to painting it to everything. Even even though it had problems with the gull wings, it had problems with the fit of the engine cowl. Um, and the, it just made me use every skill as a modeler. I haven't weathered it. Um, that's because I wanted it to look as good as I possibly could. And I knew if I started weathering it, um, I would run into problems. I'd probably overdo it and make it look rubbish because there is a, a thing online at the moment. So many people are, are what I consider over weathering models uh, and making them look basically cartoonish. Um, I don't know. It's up to it's up to the modeler, whatever you prefer. But I I kind of prefer minimal, minimalism on on the weathering side. Maybe it's a little bit of uh, dusting, but that's it. Anyway, there we go. I finished the model. Yay! <laughs> I just wanted to show you the underside detail on this. It's something people often miss. That it is absolutely incredible the amount of detail that Airfix have put into this particular kit. For 1976 or whatever a year it was, it's just amazing. And to think that every single part of this had to be made originally by hand, there were no computers around at the time, no 3D CAD or anything like that to, to help them. Um, it's just bewildering. I'd love to meet the guy who, who designed this who made the original books for the moulds to be taken from. Just absolutely stunning. Um, I'm going to flip it round so you can get a closer view of the wings as well, hopefully without me breaking the model. Just the amount of detail of the rivets is amazing. I'm showing you this warts and all. There's no Photoshop involved or anything to improve this. Uh, you can probably tell <laughs> I'm not the world's greatest modeler, but I do try and do my best at all times. And I think that's what counts. Just the detail is stunning. Right, let me see if I can get a decent image of the lights on inside. Yay! We've got the cockpit lights, as you can see, they're all on in there. I don't know if the real thing had cockpit lights, but um, maybe someone could tell me in the comments whether they did actually have lit up dials but I wanted them lit up it just makes the model pop a bit more uh, that noise of the Jericho horn is really going to be annoying me every time I turn this on I think I might disconnect that actually <laughs> there we go um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video um, if you have please think about hitting the subscribe button it really does help my channel grow uh, and it's absolutely free uh, maybe a thumbs up and a comment would really help us out thank you so much for watching